Look at this face. This is Charles II of Spain. He couldn't chew his own food. He could barely speak. He had seizure. He was most likely infertile. And he was the king of one of the most powerful empires on earth, Spain. And this wasn't a disease. This wasn't an accident. This was designed by hundreds of years of careful planning, of strategic marriages, of keeping power within the family. This is what happens when you try to feel bloodlines pure. And it just didn't destroy individuals. It toppled empires. It changed the course of world history. This is the story of Europe's most powerful families who genetically engineered their own extinction. Okay, first question, why would anyone do this? Why would the most smartest, the most powerful people on earth made such a catastrophic mistake? Here's the thing, it wasn't a mistake, it was a strategy. And for a while, it actually worked. See, if you're a king in the 1500s, Europe, you have a problem. You have all this power, but there's a catch. Every time your daughter marries some random nobleman, there's wealth and power leaving your control. Every marriage is either strengthening your dynasty or weakening it. So, European royalty came up with a solution. Marry each other. Exclusively, kings married queens from their own royal families. Their children married their cousins. Those children married their cousins. Look at this family tree of European royalty back in 1700s. It's not a tree, it's a tangled mess. Because everyone is related to everyone else. But here's what they didn't understand. Genetics. When you have a baby, you get half of your DNA from your mom, half from your dad. If your mom and dad are related, you get similar DNA from both the sides. And when this happens, recessive genes, the broken, hidden genes we all carry, start showing up. Let me show you what it looks like in practice. Queen Victoria becomes Queen of England at 18 years old. She's going to rule for 63 years. She's going to have children, she's going to pass down mutation that would kill dozens of her descendants and literally change history. Somewhere in Victoria's DNA, there's a mutation. One tiny error in one gene on her X chromosome. The gene that makes blood clot. She had hemophilia, or rather, she was a carrier. Here's how it works. Women have two X chromosomes. Men have one X and one Y chromosome. If you're a woman with one broken X chromosome, you're usually fine. Your another X chromosome compensates. But if you're a man with one broken X chromosome, you have hemophilia. Your blood doesn't clot. A small cut can kill you. A bruise can cause internal bleeding. A bump in the head can cause brain hemorrhage. Fam, uh, Victoria had nine children. She married them all to royal families all across Europe. Germany, Spain, Romania, Russia. This was a strategy, strengthening alliances, keep power in the family. But she was also spreading hemophilia across the throne in Europe. And then there was Alexei. Sarovic Alexei Romanov, the son of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, heir to the Russian throne. Born in 1904, he had hemophilia. And this is where it gets insane, because this one genetic mutation in this one child didn't just affect health, it affected history. His mother, Alexandra, Victoria's granddaughter, was desperate. Her son was dying from his own blood. The doctors couldn't help. So she turned into a mystique, a self-proclaimed holy man named Grigory Rasputin. Rasputin seemed to help Alexei. Maybe through hypnosis, maybe through prayer, maybe he told them to stop giving them aspirin which makes bleeding worse. We don't know. But what we do know is that Rasputin gained enormous influence over Russian royal family. He influenced political decisions. He swayed the Tsarina and the Russian people hated him. When World War I broke out, this mattered. The royal family was already unpopular. Rasputin made them look delusional, out of touch, controlled by a charlatan. And when the Russian Revolution came in 1970, one of the things fueling people's anger was the perception that the royal family was being controlled by a mystique or because of their one child's genetic disease. The Romanovs were executed in 1980, all of them, including Alexei. A genetic mutation from Queen Victoria 
contributed to the fall of the Russian Empire. And that's just one gene, one mutation. Now let me show you what happens when you do this for centuries. The Habsburgs. One of the most powerful dynasties in European history. They ruled Spain, Austria, Hungary, parts of Italy, parts of Germany, the Netherlands and a massive empire in the Americas. At their peak under Charles V in 1500s, they ruled over a quarter of Europe and claimed the title of Holy Roman Empire. They were obsessed with keeping power in the family. They married cousins to nieces, first cousins to cousins, and they kept doing it generation after generations. Scientists measure this using something called the coefficient of inbreeding. It's basically a number that tells you how related your parents are. For most people, it is near zero. For the Habsburg, it was off the charts. And this brings us back to Charles II. Charles II was born in 1661. His parents were uncle and niece. His grandparents were closely related. His great-grandparents were closely related. Go back far enough, he had fewer unique ancestors than he should have. Geneticists have analyzed his family tree. Charles II was more inbred than if his parents were literally siblings. He couldn't walk until he was 8 years old, he couldn't chew his own food, his jaw was deformed, his teeth didn't meet. He had an enlargement tongue which made his speech nearly impossible. He was likely infertile, he had two marriages, yet no children. And this was the king of Spain, the ruler of one of the world's most powerful empires. When he died in 1700s, at the age of 38, he had no heir. The Spanish Habsburg, one of the most powerful family lines in history, went extinct. And because there was no heir, Europe went, went to war. The war of Spanish succession lasted 13 years. Hundreds of thousands died. The entire balance of power in Europe shifted. In 2019, geneticists did a full analysis of the Habsburg family. They found that centuries of inbreeding led to 20% infant mortality rate, double the normal rate. They found that the more inbred a Habsburg was, the earlier they died. The Habsburg tried to keep their bloodlines pure. Instead, they poisoned it. And they weren't alone. King George III of England, the Mad King, who lost the American colonies, likely suffered from porphyry, a genetic disease that can cause hallucinations, paranoia, and purple urine. It ran in royal families during inbreeding. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt practiced brother-sister marriage. King Tutankhamun, his parents were brother and sister. He had a club foot, a cleft plate, and died at the age of 19. The Portuguese royal family in the early 1900s had multiple cases of haemophilia, also traced back to Queen Victoria. See, here's what's happening genetically. We all carry broken genes. Usually, they're harmless because we have two copies of each gene. One is just working enough. But when re relatives have children, those broken genes start doubling up. The more inbreeding, the more broken genes appear. So, just one disease everything starts breaking down. Immune system, fertility, mental health, physical deformities, and the data backs this up. Across royal families, the more inbred you were, the shorter was your life expectancy, the higher was your infant mortality, the more health problems you had. So like, I wouldn't take much of your time right now, but like, I would just like to make a small request Please subscribe the channel. Please, please, please. So, here's an important thing. Modern royal families have figured this out. When Prince William married Kate Middleton, she wasn't royal. She was a commoner. And this was huge, not just for tradition, but for genetics. Look at modern European royalty. They're marrying outside their class. Norwegian crown prince Hakon married a commoner who had child from their previous relationship. Spain's King Philippe married a divorced journalist. Sweden's Crown Princess Victoria married her gym trainer. This is what geneticists call hybrid vigor. When you introduce new genes into a population, you increase genetic diversity, you dilute the concentration of harmful recessive genes. The royal families that survived into the 21st centuries were the ones that learned this lesson. The ones they didn't, they are extinct. And you can see it 
Modern royals don't have the Habsburg jaw. They don't have hemophilia, they're healthy because they stopped in breed. So, here's what's wild about this story. For centuries, European royalty believed that keeping bloodlines pure was the way to preserve power, to maintain divine right, to stay superior. And it nearly destroyed them. And because that's not how genetics work, diversity is in weakness, it's strength. Mixing it is in contamination, it is survivors. The same families that ruled empires, commanded armies, shaped history, couldn't defeat biology. They couldn't engineer their way around a natural law. And that's what I think when I see Charles portrayed. This wasn't inevitable. This was a choice. A choice made over and over for centuries. The irony, the thing that destroyed these families, their obsession with purity, is the exact opposite of what science tells us makes populations strong. Variation, diversity, new genes. The royal families that understood this survived. The ones that didn't became a cautionary tale in history books. And well, YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.